Hi everyone, so today I'm going to do a wedding guest makeup tutorial and this isn't the wedding guest makeup tutorial because obviously there's infinite amount of looks you can do but I thought I'd go over some of the key considerations and do a look that I think would be a nice look. I'm actually going to go to a wedding in August so this may be the look that I will do but also I'll give you alternatives for different shades or different ways of making it work to adapt to your style really and your face. So I'm going to start with my skin prep. I applied my moisturiser and I've already applied my SPF. I'm using this one which is the Absolute Precious Cells one by Lancome. This one is just good for my skin type because although it gets a touch shiny it's not super shiny um, and certainly in the summer months, I'm not good with the really dewy looking um, SPFs. I know they're good for dry skin, but on me, I need to kind of keep it under control. But also it is a chemical SPF, so it doesn't flash back. So if you're at a wedding during the day and it's you're outdoors and you want to have your SPF on, but then you know that there will be photography, um, the chemical SPFs are less likely to flash back. Obviously test it out beforehand but um, the ones to look out for are more of the mineral, the purely mineral ones. So if you have either a foundation that contains a high SPF, mineral SPF, or a mineral SPF on its own, or even worse, both together, then what you've got is a lot of zinc oxide, a lot of titanium um, dioxide. And what happens is when the flash hits your face, it just completely flashes back. So if you're unsure, check the ingredients and do maybe a couple of shots of yourself. I mean, it, it may be that you're not going to be photographed that much. Maybe you're not in the key group of family or if anything, you're just going to be doing like pictures on your phone, which is fine. But um, absolutely, I prefer to use this one and more of a chemical one if I'm going to be photographed. So for my base, I'm actually going to sort of do the first part of my base first and then I'm going to start with the eye makeup before I finish my skin. This is just going to give my skin time to sort of settle in a little bit. So I've put about a, maybe two pumps of foundation there with half of the amount of moisturiser. So it's two thirds foundation, one third moisturiser. And I'm just going to do a light layer all over as a kind of base before I do the rest of my, do my foundation sort of properly. Now, of course, if you go to a summer wedding, it can be a really, really long day. If you're there early and then you kind of, there's photographs afterwards, you're waiting around, then there's the wedding breakfast, then there's chatting, then there's waiting, and then there's a bit more waiting, and then there's a bit more food, and eventually you end up at the, the evening. So, I mean, in some cases you have a break between the two and you can refresh, get changed, you know, change your touch up your makeup but in some cases you are you're there for the whole thing so I'm going to talk about sort of touching up as well and how really giving your makeup that really long wearing sort of stable kind of application that will help that makeup stay on all day so that's just a really thin layer I'm going to let that almost get into synergy with my skin whilst I do my makeup. So I think for your makeup look, you want to think about, obviously you want your skin to look really good, you want the makeup to be long wearing, makeup that doesn't need to be touched up a lot or worried about, like lashes that might fall off or anything like that. You also don't want to be, you don't want to have your makeup so that it's so much the focal point of everything, like it's almost upstaging the bride and anyone that meets you talks about your makeup. So you want it to be, obviously lovely makeup. I almost feel like wedding guest makeup is kind of halfway between normal makeup and red carpet makeup. It's not red carpet makeup, which is always a bit more coverage and just needs to look good in pictures, but you want more than you would on a kind of normal day out because you want that impact. You want to look like you've made an effort because that's nice as well. And also to have makeup which is going to carry you through from morning till night and look really good on camera, especially if you're going to be in lots of pictures. So I'm going to do a kind of halfway to red carpet, I'd call it. So for me, I'm going to do a lilac eye. 
I want to do that because firstly it's quite summery and I like purples. Secondly, my eyes are brown with a little bit of yellowiness in them so the purple will really make my eyes vibrant. Um, and I'll just show you a style which you could do with um, more of a peachy terracotta eye if you, were, you know, have blue eyes or if you wanted to do it even with the kind of more um, smoky purples you could um, but I'll show you a style that I think is really good for this type of makeup. So I'm going to start with an eye shadow cream. These sometimes come in pots, sometimes in sticks and these are really good because they make a really nice base all over your eye and very often they they set to the point that they're almost like an eye primer so they're really nice to work on top of. And I love this colour, this is the Beauty Pie one. So I'm just going to blend those edges. So that's my kind of, my base coat. I mean, it's such a pretty colour, so fresh. I'm not really into personally matching makeup to sort of clothes and things like that, which I don't really like, so... But if I was wearing, I mean, what I'm wearing today, like this blue dress, I would definitely wear with this kind of eye or something that was opposite as well. I really love that when you've got purple eyes and maybe a peachy colored dress or something that's got warm tones in it. I love that look as well. So I'm just going to let that set. I can feel it setting actually. If you're not using this type of a base, then I strongly recommend that you use an eye primer first because that will really help. Something, anything like an Urban Decay one, a NARS Pro Prime, anything that's that works. Or a paint pot, a MAC paint pot, also really, really good. While this is setting, I think I might just put a little bit along the lower lashes as well. I'm going to blend over this. So next I'm going to use this lavender eyeshadow. This is in a Ciate palette on top of this which is obviously very matte and very kind of it's a bit too stark. I really like this look but I think for a wedding I would kind of pretty it up a bit. So I'm just going to go over the top. I'm actually going to use my fingers to start with just to pat a little bit of this colour. So it's sort of lilac-y and pinky. Just on the lid at the moment. I'm going to use this palette by Lancôme, which just has more sort of matte purples, a little bit more definition. I'm going to start with um, a shade that looks quite deep. It's the one here at the end and just use that to kind of carve out a little bit more of a defining shape. So I'm just going to push that really into the socket line there. And I think with any kind of colours, whether you're using these sorts of colours, whether you're going more for a, a blue or a any kind of colourful eye, I think when it gets too pastely, obviously it's quite hard to wear if you've got a deeper skin tone, but also it can be a little stark on anyone because it's um, you're not really getting any definition, so you're not able to kind of give your eyes that shape, which for photography is is really helpful. So just by adding a bit more colour. And if you're someone that's not crazy about having a lot of colour on your eyes, then you can start with this brighter colour like I've done with the purple, but then add greys or more neutral colours to almost ground it. I'm sticking with the purples for now, but if it gets too much by the time I've finished, I might add some brown eyeliner or a grey eyeliner or something just to give myself a bit more shape. 
So just working on really giving that definition. I'm also going to go back in with a small brush, again with the deeper shade. And just give a little bit more depth there as well at the outer edge. So if you've got a very round eye shape, you won't want to make it kind of dark all the way along the bottom because it tends to make the eye look even rounder. So if you really want to kind of open up your eyes, keep most of the depth towards the outer edge there. And if your eyes are hooded, when you're doing your socket line, just keep looking ahead again because when your eyebrows are relaxed and that's how you'll kind of be for most of the day, except when you're talking or surprised or something, you can kind of work into that space a little bit more. And by looking straight ahead into a mirror, you can see really how far you can come up. And if your eyes are hooded, you'll find that you can come up probably higher than you thought. So just keep relaxing your eyes and just keep blending and creating that, that nice shape there. And as I say, if you're worried about, oh, this is too much color, you can wait until you're closer towards the end of the makeup when you've done your mascara, your eyelashes, you can always then add a bit of brown eyeliner or a little bit more gray eyeshadow or something to neutralize it. But I think for the moment, of course, it looks very colorful because you don't have anything else on your face, but kind of stick with it because you'll be surprised how once you've got your mascara on and maybe some individual lashes, you'll start to lose that. The color will become less intense anyway. And then just keep blending. Okay, so that's the sort of basic shape for the eye makeup. I am gonna do some lashes. I'm gonna go on to skin now, just while I'm doing it in stages. This really helps me as well to see how the eyes look once there's concealer underneath the eyes or the rest of the foundation's done. Sometimes even just doing it in stages like that can just help you to decide how much of everything you want. So I'm just adding my highlighter now, mainly to the high points of my <clears throat> cheeks. And really blending it well into my, what effectively is a tinted moisturizer. So just keeping all these layers really thin because that's what's going to help this makeup stay on and do the course. I'm not going to have to do any touch-ups. Everything is going to be really nicely applied. And I think the key is that it looks good in daylight close up because you're going to be talking to people really close up, but then that can also look good in photos as well. And that is the secret. That's the trick. You need it to look good in all lights, close up and far away. So that's why we're going to be quite particular when applying the skin makeup, the concealer, powder, all of that stuff. So I'm going to go on now to foundation. So I'm going to do just one pump, but I'm going to build up. I'm probably going to put another two to three pumps on, but really thin layers, well, well blended. So that's about half a pump. really working it into the skin either with a sponge with fingers whatever however you normally apply your foundation but just keeping it so that it's it's just settling right into the skin Okay, so that's my next layer. Now I'm gonna do concealing and then I might even do a touch more foundation here and there. I'm gonna use the double wear, a still order double wear. This is a good one because it does stay on. It's got really good staying power, but it's not too heavy, like you don't see it sort of sitting under there, but it does give you good coverage as well. 
and just really blending that in. And then while they are looking good, I'm just going to put a little bit of powder under the eyes, set that concealer. And while that's just settling down, I'm going to finish any concealing on my face. What I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to go back in with Touch of Foundation and I'm going to use that sort of anywhere else that I feel like. It's not pinpoint concealing, but I want more coverage. So for me, that's around my mouth area. One more layer. Or if you want to, you can just do a whole buff of a whole other layer over the top. And then you'll have that really great kind of build up, but it just feels so natural on the skin. So it's like a patchwork skin. A bit more than that, actually. We're, we're covering a bit more so that this makeup is going to stay flawless all day. I have got a little spot on my neck here. I'm going to use some of my Laura Mercier just to pinpoint around that area. Uh, and then I'm going to set all of this with powder. Actually, I might put a tiny bit of cream blush on the first layer and then I'm going to set everything. It's got one. A mark here. I'm also going to give myself a little lip lift. So I'm going to just do a bit of extra concealing at those corners. I'm going to use this lightest shade of these Darnessa Myrex cream blushes and this was part of the Katie Jane Hughes set which I thought was really good value for money. So I'm just going to put a tiny bit of the more pinky one on and then I'm going to blend that in with a touch more highlighter. But I'm going to use my brush that had already my foundation on. So it's got a little bit of foundation on. And then I'm going to add one drop of highlighter. And blend those edges. So I've got a nice illuminating blush. So next I'm going to use my face powder. I'm going to do just my T-zone and anywhere that I have done concealing. So a little bit on my neck there where I'd conceal the spot. Definitely around my mouth where I did my extra little bits of concealing here and there. And anywhere that I know I tend to get shiny throughout the day. So just a little bit more on the T-zone section. So I've used my foundation, which doesn't have any SPF in, so that's not going to do any flashing back. And it is a long wearing one, which I definitely recommend for these types of days, particularly in the summer months. You do want that. Although you might think, oh, I'll just put a bit of dewy tint on, it's just not going to stay on in the way that more of a long wearing formula will. And it's just nice to get your makeup done, get it looking good, and then just forget about it, not have to worry about it. Because you want to enjoy yourself, you want to be really present and focused and not thinking, is my makeup sliding down my face? So next I'm going to do my... I Actually, I'm going to make a decision about pencil here. I might add a little bit of pencil... I think just through the lashes for me, because I do want to keep this purpliness, but maybe I'm just going to ground it a little bit. So I'm going to use either a brown, maybe a brown pencil actually. Yeah, I'm going to use a brown, dark brown pencil. 
and I'm going to just use that through the roots of my eyelashes and probably in my upper waterline so that we get that really lovely purpliness but without having it kind of too close to the eye almost. I put a little bit through the outer edge there at the lash line and then very much just working into those lashes. Sorry, I'm probably going to water. So kind of almost putting it underneath those lashes and then massaging. If I've got really sensitive eyes, but I manage to do this if I do it kind of slowly. So just do little backwards and forwards rather than try and do the whole thing in one sweep. Just feels a bit more gentle as well. So you can see it's just starting to create kind of a line, but not really a very prominent line. This takes a little bit of time, just so that it's really well laid down. If you can see the difference there, I'll show you from one eye to the next. And then as you come into that inner corner, it's going to make it really thin. So it's more just under the eye. And if your eyes are very round, keep it really thin at the inner corner as well. But sorry, once my eyes stop watering, just see it gives you that little bit more extra definition. And if you're someone that just loves eyeliner and want more of an eyeliner, then this look would still actually look really nice with a winged liner. So I'm going to keep going on this now. So we're, we know we've got it really well in the roots of the lashes. Now we're just building up just at that outer edge there. Just giving it a bit more width, a bit more definition. And then kind of looking straight ahead, starting to do a bit more of a, a slight wing. For me, that eye is quite hooded there, so I don't want to do a really big one because then I'll have to commit to a really big one. So I'm just going to make it almost like a mini, kind of mini wing there. So get right to the end there, made it quite full. And then just starting to really ease up that little, almost a triangle shape. So we've got our triangle from the outer edge to where we've thickened up the liner. And then just starting to ease up. Because it's a nice soft pencil, you can just then use a little soft brush just to lift up a little bit more. And you can see that it gives that really nice sort of gamine liner look, but without having to commit to a really strong liquid liner or a, um, something that just doesn't give you that movability. So the next thing I'm gonna do is give my eyelashes a really good curl and I'm going to apply some waterproof mascara, just a thin layer to start with, because I'm gonna put some individual lashes on, which are really feathery and quite fine. They're almost very kind of um, summery and pretty, and they just don't give you that feeling of having a heavy lash on. I will say that when you're taking them off of here, you have to be really careful, because they're so delicate. If you pull them off, they just break, so you almost have to go down to the bottom where they're attached and kind of gently lift them from there but a couple of bit of practice and it's fine um, so I'm just going to put a light layer of mascara on so this is waterproof mascara I mean be guided by if you think it's going to be emotional and you're going to be shedding some tears then go for waterproof if you think you're going to be fine then use your trusted whatever mascara is you use but a smudge proof one at least I'd say um, particularly if it's going to be hot. So there's a, a light layer all over. I'm going to do the lower lashes as well. And then I'm going to start to just get my lashes on. I'm going to keep the mascara light. And the reason I'm doing that is because the fake eyelashes that I'm going to use are very lightweight. So what can happen is if you put on too much mascara on the 
especially if it's on the ends of your lashes and your lashes start to look thick and mascara-y, then you put on some individual fake lashes that are very fine. You really notice that your lashes look kind of overly mascara So we, I want them to blend in. So I'm mainly just using this mascara on my roots and then I'm really giving them a good brush through so those ends remain quite delicate. Once you've got the, the lashes on, then you can put put more mascara in because then they'll all be of equal dimension and strength. And again, it will help them to look really, really natural when you are in daylight close up to people. So I'm just gonna put my lashes on now. So I've taken a little bit of glue from the back of my hand. That's a little bit of duo glue I'm using the black glue because I have the liner on. And then if you hold your mirror really low, you can kind of see where the gaps are in your lashes. I mean, these are really fine. I'm gonna start about the center. Just drop it on at the, almost at the roots of the lash. And then you can kind of tap it into place with your finger. And you can see, because they're so fine, what's nice about these ones is you can put quite a few on and they can almost crisscross, which gives you that really natural effect. So I'm just gonna put a few more on working outwards and maybe one more in the middle. But as I say, just keep the mirror low and you can really start to see. And if they're sticking up too much, you can just take your finger, grab hold of it and just kind of almost press it in with your lashes. So whilst the glue is drying on my lashes, I'm going to go on to my eyebrows. I'm gonna use the Kimiko pencil and just fill in here and there. A little bit of length on the end there, not too much. There, my brows are pretty good at the moment, so just fill in wherever you need to fill in. I always recommend brushing them down first, filling in from behind if you need to create a good arch and then really brushing them back over to keep them looking really natural. So I'm just gonna use some brow gel now Hold on, I can't open this. This has been put on oh, really tight. This is the Benefit one, which I like because it's definitely holds them in place, gives them a slightly groomed, glossy look, but it doesn't dry with any white patches, which unfortunately a lot of them do. So this is kind of one of my kit favorites. I'm also gonna go back in now that the lashes are dry and put on a little hint more mascara. I'm really happy with how these lashes look. So I just want to almost help to kind of attach them together. So by adding a, a little bit of mascara through both sets of lashes, my lashes and the little fake lashes, you're giving them that kind of binding, if you like, so that they look like they are one and the same thing. And then take a little brush, this is the brow brush actually, and again, just keep those edges really nice and fluffy and natural. So, onto skin. I'm going to use a little bit of bronzer to start with. I'm going to use this one by um, Fenty. This is one of their lighter shades of bronzer. Just start to, I wouldn't say contour with it, but a hint of a contour with it. So I'm just giving a little bit of shape, kind of using bronzer to shape the face without having a, a heavily contoured look. Use a little bit around the neck touch across the forehead, onto the temples, across the forehead, just so you've been kissed by the sun. A little bit on the center of the nose. And then just coming up onto the cheeks as well, just to kind of warm that top of the cheek up. I'm also gonna use a blush, but I'm gonna use more of a peachy blush. The reason I'm gonna do that is because I really like it when you've got quite a cool 
eyeshadow on, something like a purple, and when the blush feels a little bit warmer, and just blend that in really well. Once this is on, I can start to think about the eyes and if I want to tone down the purple, I want to accentuate it, I want to make it more. And just having that pop of colour, especially if you're using bronzer, just gives a freshness to the bronzer, stops it from all being quite monotoned, which is again a lovely look, but I think for a summer wedding you want to have that kind of fresh skin look. So just really blending that in. And this kind of eye makeup, I think would just be gorgeous in like a lettucey green or an olive green or a peachy terracotta. Any of those really nice summery colors, whatever suits your skin tone really in your eyes. Now under the eyes, because now everything's kind of set in, I'm gonna really have a sort of re-examination of that whole area. So I'm going to start by just looking at the shape of the eye, shadow. I'm just going to bring, blend those edges up and out a little bit. And then underneath, because now of course I've done my under eye concealer, I feel like now is a good moment to go in and kind of make sense of underneath there. And a really nice thing to do actually is with a smallish brush, you can even go in just with a little bit of your bronzer I know it's a different shade, but just kind of almost hardly any on the brush, but just warm up the edges of your shadow. Just gives it a really natural look. And then in terms of the color, if you suddenly decide whatever color you've used, oh, it's just too much. Like if I suddenly decided this is just too much purple, I would add something like, for example, this sort of a shade, which is like a cool silvery grey shade, I would blend a bit more of that in, which would just take the edge off the purpliness. I'm quite happy with it. I might put a little bit on just to show you. But if you wanted to kind of like tone it down, and you could do the same thing underneath, where you're just, just taking away some of the brightness in a way. If you suddenly feel, oh, it's just too much, it's not me. Likewise, if you've done a sort of peachy terracotta eye, you could add a touch of a sort of natural gold shimmer, like more sort of neutralizing. And then under the eyes, I think I'm gonna actually lighten up that inner corner. So I'm going to go back to my palette here from Lancome. I'm gonna use the lighter shade there, which is a really, really light lavender shade. And I feel like if I add that at the inner corner, Again, it will just make it a little bit less purple all over. Yeah, that's just really kind of lifted it. Or you might decide you want it more colorful, you want more purple on, in which case, go for it. But you can really sort of start to get a sense of all of that once you've got your blush on, your brows on, you're starting to get your, you know, your hair together and how it's all gonna look. And maybe at this point you go and get your outfit out and put it up against you so you can see in a mirror how you look with the color of your dress. Because if you're sitting there in a white robe, sometimes you'll do your makeup and it will look really good against the white or maybe a black robe. And then you put the outfit on, and suddenly you look washed out or you look like you've got too much color on or whatever. So. Bear in mind that, you know, put your outfit on. Now, I do that a lot with red carpet. We'll get to a point in the makeup where we'll say, okay, go and put the outfit on because I almost can't make my final decision about a lip color or whether I want more color or more strength. So there is that element of kind of putting it all together, you know, pulling down the hair, having the hair ready. So for my lips, because my eyeshadow is definitely not my everyday color, um, I love it, um, but it's kind of like enough of a statement for me. I'm going to go more everyday on my lip color. So I'm gonna use the Fawn pencil first. I'm gonna use this all over, so more like a stain. And then I'm just gonna use from my handbag my regular Kitten Mischief lipstick. Um, and that's 
one that I can just touch up with if I need to throughout the day. More of a balmy texture, but also not going to be in competition with the eyes. So I'm gonna put a thin layer all over of the pencil, and then I'm gonna use this pencil just to shape a little bit. And then I'm gonna put my Kitten Mischief on. Over the top. And that's it. So it's just nice and easy, pretty makeup, but with quite a... Look like I've definitely made an effort on the eyes, I think. And I do feel like there's just so many more weddings now. I think everyone that cancelled their wedding from 2020 and even 2021 is suddenly getting married now. So there's just loads and loads of weddings happening, which is lovely. And um, I'm definitely excited to go to my first wedding in quite a few years this August. So that's it. If you have any other um, shades that you love using, please let us know in the comments. I think that a kind of fresh, colorful eye does feel really lovely for a summer wedding. And one thing to mention as well is, you shouldn't need to touch up too much at all with this kind of makeup. I'd say if you are oily skin, then you would hopefully have used more of a mattifying primer. So definitely a blotting paper is great because you can blot almost without a mirror and just kind of every time you go to the bathroom, just give a little blot or take a little bit of powder, blotting powder, and just give yourself a little blot. Um, something that is quite nice to do, and I was thinking like, if you've had this look for the whole day and you want to like up the ante in the evening, you could take a gloss or just go a bit glossier on your lips or even, I just want to try this, which is um, more of a glitter eyeshadow. And as the kind of evening starts and the dancing and all of that, you could just add just a little sprinkle of glitter over the top. It just kind of makes the eye makeup suddenly look really eveningy, but without any effort whatsoever. So just fingers, dot, dot, dot on, and then suddenly you've got a kind of full on disco eye moment. Um, but yeah, apart from that, you shouldn't need to lipstick, bit of powder, good to go. Um, so if you are going to a wedding this summer, have loads of fun and um, I shall see you very soon. Lots of love, bye.